Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to do this moon balloon in watercolor, and I'm really excited to use these watercolors. I purchased these from Amazon um, uh, about a month ago. They are the Art Nouveau watercolors from Karataki Ganze Tambi, and they are all kind of muted colors. They're really pretty. Now, in my sketchbook is a marker artwork that I did back in 2021 for Inktober. The prompt was moon, and I just did a big moon hot air balloon, and uh, out of my imagination, and I really loved how it came out. So I thought this would be really fun to do with these watercolors because it kind of has that um, vintage illustration vibe that I thought would go really well with this palette of colors. Um, if you'd like a real-time narrated tutorial for this, you can find it up in Critique Club right now. Critique Club is $5 a month and it gives you access to all past tutorials as well as monthly prompts and I add two new tutorials every month and you can even upload up to two paintings a month for critique from me for feedback. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, I'll have a link in the video description so you can check it out. I'm using a big brush to brush away any eraser crumbs and um, I have a cat and I will warn you if you have a cat that goes into your studio and you keep your brushes out on your table chances are you're going to find cat hair in them because my cat will go up and rub her face on them so often when I'm getting that big brush out to brush away my crumbs I get cat hair on my artwork so and I always forget I should keep it in a drawer <laughs> but I never remember to. And I'm just freehand sketching on here. You can always sketch on some copy paper and then just transfer it onto your watercolor paper with graphite film if you prefer. But um, I don't know, I just like to jump in and draw. That's just my, you know, my preference, even though it means that sometimes I have to erase on the paper. But I find that if I have a good quality watercolor paper, as long as I'm not doing too much erasing, it's fine. So. I'm going to wet everything except for the basket and the moon balloon and we're going to put in some colors. Now the um, the colors in the Art Nouveau set are not super dark, they're not super saturated, so this is going to look a lot different than my first illustration I did in marker. The illustration I did in marker is nighttime sky. This is going to be kind of a, a daytime or almost like sunrise or dusk type sky. I'm starting off with the darkest blue that I have, which is this almost like, um, it almost looks like a country blue, honestly, like that really popular um, color that was like, I would say early 90s, you know, that kind of country blue. You'd always see like canisters of geese on them. It had the country blue accents. Um, that's what that color reminds me of. It's not dark enough to be a night sky, but I thought it would be dark enough to be a dusk sky. So um I decided I would put in some purples as well. Now, at first I thought maybe I'll have this kind of like daytime and I'll have some nice bright green grass, but it, I didn't like the way that looked. It was just made the balloon look too sunken, like it was too low in the sky. So I painted over that, uh, adding in some blue, uh, some, I'm sorry, mauve. Uh, there's a couple different purpley colors. I think one's like vintage mauve and one's old mauve or something. I can't remember the, what they're called exactly. Uh, but anyway, I put the more purpley one in. And um, then I went back to the bottom of the painting with the shadow green color. And I thought this will look like like tree studded mountains in the mist. And that's kind of, uh, I like that. I thought that looked pretty good. Um, and then I went in with some of the alizarin crimson and some of the blush pink to do some clouds and some cloud highlights. And it gave it really kind of like a soft, less creepy vibe. <laughs> I feel like my marker illustration does look kind of creepy, not super creepy, but anytime I see those man in the moon like illustrations, illustrations, I always think they look a little bit creepy. Um, so this being daytime-ish, I think looks less creepy. You can let me know what you think in the comments below. But actually, I was thinking, you know, this would be really cute hanging in a nursery. Um, but I don't know, maybe it's creepy. You'll have to let me know. Is it creepy? Is it cute? Uh, maybe it's both. Who can say? I also decided I would paint the eyes at this point because um, they could dry at the same time the background was drying. And then... Um, after that was dry, I could go in and paint the moon itself because watercolor is only going to go where the paper's wet. If Since I didn't wet the moon and I didn't wet the basket, the paint didn't flow there. So now that the background's dry, I can go in and paint the moon. Now, I didn't pre-wet it because one thing I've noticed with these Art Nouveau paints is that they're kind of, uh, they're more viscous and you can lay them down and they don't get very streaky. You almost have to work to get streaks. They lay down very smoothly. Um, and I think Gansai Tambi paints do in general have that characteristic but especially where these are more opaque they've got white added to them I think it just reduces the amount of blooming and streaking you're going to get 
with this type of paint. So um, actually, I wouldn't say this is a palette for beginners, but I would say if you are a beginner, like maybe you just love the colors and you want to use them for uh, maybe coloring in some stamped images or scrapbook pages or adult coloring books, I think these would actually be pretty easy to work with. Um, I don't recommend mixing them too much because they will get muddy if you over mix. Um, they're kind of best to just kind of dip your brush in full strength and just go right to the paper, maybe mix on the paper. But uh, but yeah, I could see them totally being useful for doing some sort of um, application where you're coloring in or adding color to a project as long as you don't need to mix. Is, you know, you just want to go in with that pure color. I'm just kind of sculpting the face a little bit, uh, adding some shadow towards the edges to give it a more round appearance rather than a flat cookie appearance. And I'm also kind of contouring around the um, around the nose and eyes and trying to sculpt the face a little bit and giving like the kind of some of the cratery looks and putting some blush in there. And, you know, really, it's imagination. You can do whatever you want to do. You don't have to. Um, you know, you don't you don't have to think of in realistic terms because this is not a realistic subject. This is a, you know, lady in the moon, I guess. Um, the colors were a bit it was a bit strange to work with a bespoke palette like this, because generally what I would do is I would start with my more saturated colors and I'd mix the color I wanted. So you're already starting with a color that's been mixed down to something else. And that can be a little bit um, a little bit odd. To do, I decided to smooth everything out at this point because um, I wanted to do the craters in a different technique. So I just ended up just kind of brushing over everything and just kind of trying to get a more creamy, smooth appearance. And I decided to fill in the basket while I was at it. And then uh, when I'm doing the craters here, I'm doing a technique that's called side loading. So I'm just kind of wetting my brush, dipping the corner, one corner of the brush in paint, and then twirling my brush in a circle, essentially with the outside, uh, outside bristles and depositing a kind of like a faded um, gradient of color. And that just gives us a really nice natural looking gradient here. Um, and I'm just using my sketchbook as a guide. I'm not looking to copy everything exactly because I know the values are going to be a lot different because I can't get my sky that dark and have it blue. I guess I could do like a green that was really dark, but I didn't want a green sky. That's the darkest color I have there. Even that brown that looks really dark in the pan is not really that brown. It's more of a reddish. Um, it's, it's more sheer and more reddish, but uh, reddish brown color. So, but I thought this was a really fun, um, a really fun concept to do in some different types of colors and yet keep that kind of storybook vintage art deco vibe going. And this is a fun little technique. I highly recommend trying it. You're just kind of twirling your, your paintbrush and making those little circles for the craters. And, uh, it's pretty easy. It's a pretty good way to get some quick and easy dimension. And the nose, I was thinking, looks the bridge of the nose is looking a little too skinny, so I am going to scrub that out a little bit. Uh, so don't worry about that. I know it looks a little strange right there, but um, that's the one thing I like about, well, I like a lot of things about this paint. It's funny. I really like it. I'm having a lot of fun with it, but I'm, I'm hastening to say I recommend it because I know that there are beginners that will watch my tutorials and might be like, oh, I need to get that, but and it might cause them a little bit of um, learning curve issues, but I'm having a lot of fun with that. I just, sometimes it's fun to let other people pick your colors out and just go for it. I think it's why I like the color cubes uh, palettes by Sarah Renee Clark, because you can just pick out a card and there's a palette on there you can try. And it might be colors you wouldn't necessarily put together. Uh, to make that black color, I mixed the bright vermilion red with the shadow green, and that gave me a pretty darn good black. I mean, it's not pitch black, it's not perfectly black, but it's really dark. And with this range of values that I have going here, they're all pretty light uh, to mid-range. It stands out fine. So it's it's all about being in relation to the other things. If I used like a black uh, Sharpie on this, it would look way too dark because of the... Um, because it would just be too dark compared to all these other muted tones I'm using. Now I switched to a liner brush and the brushes I've been using in this with the exception of the um, half inch flat and the scrubber brush are from my kit with Craft Ammo. I think there may be a couple sets left in stock. I will link to it if they are, but um, they're, uh, they're nice high quality vegan brushes. They're the larger size brushes though, um, because I figure a lot of people already have your basic smaller brushes. With my kit, I wanted to do larger brushes. So um, I will, and there's a liner in there too, because I think that's a brush that a lot of people don't have, or they don't have one that performs very well. So, uh, so that's what I'm using there. I'm using that liner to get some finer lines. That scrubber brush is a real handy one. That's actually by Menta by Royal and Nicole, and uh, 
I got mine at AC Moore back when they were in business. They sell them for, uh, they were, they're pretty inexpensive. They're under $5 a brush. And um, I haven't seen them. We don't have that many stores in my area, so I can't say what big box stores would have them. But um, Royal and Line Nickel has a pretty good uh, representation in stores. But if they have them open stock, that's called a scrubber from the mental line. It's a golden ha- Taclon short hair brush, and it's not too aggressive for watercolor paper. A lot of scrubbers will kind of tear your paper up because they're that those stiff white um, bristles. And I think they must be meant for scrubbing like acrylic primed surfaces and not watercolor paper because they're really rough. But the Menta by Royal and Line Nickel scrubbers are excellent. I would highly recommend grabbing a couple because um, you, you'll use them. You'll definitely use them. Um, I am adding a little bit of detail to the edges of the circle, the edges of the moon, and some of the craters. I did switch to a small round brush because one thing I will tell you about liners, liners are great for doing long lines and holding a lot of paint. But when you want to navigate around smaller shapes, the length of the bristles make them want to almost flip-flop. And you can um, quickly lose control of those brushes. So if you want more control, you want a shorter haired brush. If you want more color carrying capacity, you want a longer bristle brush. So just uh, just for your info. Um, and I recommend keeping your brushes, keeping an assortment of your brushes in a jar on your desk. Uh, you don't need to separate them by brand. You can use the different brands together. Just keep separate them by medium. So I keep all my watercolor brushes together. I keep my acrylic brushes together. I keep my oil brushes together. The only brushes I use for multiple mediums would be my, um, I have uh, a bunch of, actually they're Royal and Nanical as well. They're the Zen all media brushes and I use them for gouache and acrylic because it's fine for those two to share. Acrylic is probably the hardest medium on brushes, but, um, you know, using using your acrylic brushes for gouache or watercolors isn't going to hurt them, but using your watercolor brushes for acrylics could very well hurt them. So you just want to, uh, what are they, downwards compatible, but not upwards compatible? I don't know. Uh, I don't know what, a good analogy for that. Uh, so now I'm just playing with some of the pastel colors in the set and painting the little bunting that's coming off of the bottom of the balloon, which I think is just such a uh, wistful um, storybook, whimsical um, touch, personally. And I'm just repeating the purple, the uh, green, purple, pink, blue, red um, repetition. I'm just, just kind of repeating that. Yeah, right? <laughs> repeating the repetition. And it's fun to stick to just a set amount of colors. Uh, not mixing and just sticking with the colors I have, I found was just a lot of fun and something I don't typically do. I typically start, have fewer colors, but I would have colors that are more mixing colors. Um, but then it makes me kind of, uh, and it's not a bad thing, but it does make me kind of probably stick to a lot of the same mixes, the same colors. This kind of forces me to um, think outside the box and go with a whole different um, a whole different range. Uh, here I'm using some Prismacolor colored pencils to just pump up the color in certain areas. I'm using some vermilion and peach to kind of uh, blush out the um, lips and the cheeks a little bit more. And um, using this really, really light peach color for some highlights. And basically they're colors that are, they're maybe just a little bit more saturated than what I have in my palette there, but they are very close. So I don't want to change any color outright, but um, like I'm using white to highlight things. It's not really, um, it's not really changing the color of anything. I'll use a color that's a shade lighter or a shade darker of something. I'm putting those pastel Brute Fooner Macron pencils. Um, they're colored pencils, they're not pastel pencils. They're just pastel shades uh, to, to good use. I find them to be really great for blending out brighter colors and for also just highlighting. And I'm putting some detail in the basket just with some uh, creams and some browns and taking the brown and adding a little bit more shadow around the edge and in some of the craters for some definition. And basically I'm just kind of, um, I'm just kind of puttering around and uh, putting on those fun finishing touches. And this was a lot of fun. I hope that you give something like this a try. If it's not exactly this, maybe you come up with some whimsical illustration that you want to, um, you know, create in this fashion. This palette is excellent, I think, for doing kind of storybook looking illustrations, vintage illustrations. It's currently sold out, at least at the time I'm recording this, but uh, I imagine it will be back in stock on Amazon soon. I haven't seen it on Blick yet. It is a new product. Um, but uh, yeah, it went out of stock on Amazon a couple times and I, and I snagged this when it came back in after Christmas 
because I was hoping I would get it for Christmas, but I think it sold out uh, too fast beforehand. But I'm really, really happy with the way this came out. And um, if I still had, you know, little babies, I would definitely frame this and put it in their bedroom because I think it's just super duper cute. Like I said, if you would like a real-time version of this tutorial, you can find it up now in Critique Club over at lindsaywyrick.teachable.com. I'll put a link in the video description if you want to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.